Now, we're not only talking about the consciousness that is physically formatted, as you are. We're talking about consciousness in general. But specifically speaking to the consciousness that you know as physical consciousness, whether it's in a bird or a frog or a dog or a human, you are all having exposure to experience. And you are all, whether you feel like admitting it or not, you are all selfishly oriented in the sense that you only have perspective of self. So when you, as yourself, is having exposure to an experience, you cannot help but come to your conclusions of what would be better for you. Now we know many of you believe that you should care more about what's happening to others, and we know you want to care about others. We know you do care about others. We do too. But the thing that we want you to understand most of all is that you can never release your perspective of self and you will never release your ability, in fact it is your nature, to come to continuing conclusions about what would be better for you and therefore for all. And what we mean by that is if every consciousness, even the one-celled organism, has the experience of exploring the contrast wherever it is perceiving. And from that exploration comes to conclusions of improvement. And if source answers that call for improvement every time, not just selectively, not just that nation over there or that one over there, or not just this species or that, but across the board, 100% of the time, when you ask, it is given. When you ask and it is given, there is an expansion, not just of your experience, but of all that is. And can you see how? If everyone who is asking, and by everyone we mean everyone, when everyone is asking and everyone is answered, can you see how all are beneficially affected by that? So, the second premise that we want you to consider is that there is no competition about anything because anyone who is asking is being answered. The only reason that humans come to this attitude of shortage consciousness is because they ask for things that they hold themselves then, not purposefully usually, vibrationally apart from. When you ask for something and you don't find a way to find vibrational alignment with what you're asking for, when life causes you to ask for more money but you continue to complain about not having enough, not having enough, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, I don't have enough. When you beat the drum of not enough money, even though you've asked for more money, you're not letting it in. It's piling up in your vibrational escrow. It's not going anywhere. Nobody else can get it, but you can't get it either as long as you are vibrationally not matching the feeling of abundance. You can't feel like not enough and ever get enough. It just can't happen. Any more than you can set your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and hear what's being broadcast on 98.7 FM. Your frequencies have to match up. So... When you understand that the contrast causes you to ask, and when you do, it is given every single time. And by that we mean everything that you see here in what you call manifestation was preceded by an idea that was pondered long enough that the idea took shape and form by the sheer attention to it. Everything. You are magnificent beings and really good at creating, but you have not managed to scrape enough dirt together to launch another Earth into orbit. You've got to acknowledge that there's something bigger going on. And that thing that is bigger that is going on is that there was consciousness before there was matter. There was consciousness before there was Earth. There was consciousness before there was all of this stuff that you see as manifestation. And that consciousness, that energy, that thought vibration, which precedes everything, precedes everything that comes to you. So a premise that really trips a lot of physical humans up is that mostly you don't want to give your attention to something until it is manifested, which really slows you down. If you could give your attention to an idea and not give your attention to the opposite of the idea, if you could think about what you want and stop beating the drum of it's not here yet, what you want would come quickly because law of attraction says that it must. So let us put this whole thing together for you in a way that you can really feel it from your broader perspective and from your physical perspective. You were, before you came into this physical body, source energy consciousness. You are, even though that you are now 
in this physical body still source energy consciousness in fact you are more source energy consciousness than you are the physical consciousness that you know as your personality so this non-physical part of you who intended to come forth and have the experience that you're having still remains non-physically focused but as you in your physical form explore and come to decisions or ideas of preferences and desires what happens is that larger part of you gives undivided attention to your newest idea of improvement and you have collected quite a batch of improvements you've been amending yourself you've been amending your desires you've been saying this would be better this would be better this would be better as a species as a mass consciousness and as individuals you are doing just what you knew you would do you are coming forth and life is evoking from you clear ideas of expansion and improvement and the source within you who knows no one would know better than you right there in the living of whatever it is no one would know better than you this this preference that is born and source is so sure that no one would know better than you if you are a one-celled organism or a cell in someone's body or if you are a full-fledged creative genius as you are when you ask source follows the rocket of desire and becomes the vibrational equivalent of what you have asked for not only that melding it in to the other things that you've asked for so that this expansion continues constantly eternally now when you croak you'll catch up with all of that we love that disrespectful word croak since there is no death when you have your death croaking death croaking we prefer croaking experience when you croak <coughs> when you have your croaking experience you will be the non-physical essence of all that life in this physical body have caused you to become in other words you are expanding as a consciousness we just don't think you should have to croak to experience the benefit of what life has caused you to ask for so as we are exploring this powerful law of attraction and we'll talk about it all day long here today from the two aspects which are you from the non-physical aspect where law of attraction is responding to this vibrational escrow that is amassing on your behalf when you ask it goes into we call it a vibrational escrow because it goes to a vibrational place where it begins to amass circumstances and events and other cooperative partners long before it begins to show up in manifested physical real life you call it form in your life experience so this vibrational escrow is amassing so the source within you is tending to this vibrational escrow and law of attraction is responding to this vibrational escrow law of attraction is also responding to what you're talking about right now to what you're thinking about right now so if life caused you to ask for something a lovely relationship or an improved body condition or more money source is on it you could say source is beating the drum of it source is not giving attention to anything relative to you other than this newly improved place that you have come to through life experience so you could say source is beating the drum of your wellness of your abundance of your clarity of your vitality of your worthiness of your love of all of the stuff that you've been asking for the question that this art of allowing workshop wants to ask is what are you doing right now are you beating the drum saying if you are you feel great if you're beating the drum of plenty of money it's on the way I'm thriving I know it's showing up if you're beating the drum of hopefulness you're nearly there if you're beating the drum of believing and knowing you're there but if you're beating the drum of I don't have enough I've been asking where is it I don't get it I don't get what's taking so long if you're beating those drums then you're beating a different drum you have a different vibration going on now the interesting thing about this is law of attraction is responding to all vibrations and organizing them and putting vibrations that match each other together just like your radio signals so the larger part of you is beating the drum of abundance if this physical part of you is beating the drum of not enough what do you think the effect that law of attractions response to both of those aspects of you is having on you you're being pulled apart you're having negative emotion negative emotion is your indicator you're not allowing yourself to be who you have become instead you're doing what so many humans do you're trying to justify why you want it by pointing out how bad it is without it 
I need this thing that I want that I do not have. And we say, you just got to start practicing and feeling within yourself are your comments, is your perspective, are the thoughts you think, are the conversations you have with others and with yourself, are they about what you want or are they about where you are? And if you're like most humans, most of your thinking is about where you are because, bless your hearts, you are such wonderful observers of what is. What is seems to have the majority of your attention. And occasionally you give your attention to what was as you try to explain what is. <laughs> I'm here because. And before I was here, I was there and it was worse. <laughs> so as you begin to understand that everything that you feel is about how well you are keeping up with you. How about that? That's the best way to say it. Life keeps causing you to become more. And when you go in the direction of the more that you've become, you feel great. That's what vitality is. That's what that feeling of energy, enthusiasm. That's what a feeling of passion is. That's what that feeling of eagerness is. When you feel eager or passionate, you're pointed in the direction of who you've become and you're being pulled on the current, called by your previous becoming. But if you feel anything less than that, if you feel upset, if you feel angry, if you feel deceived, if you feel powerless, if you feel frightened, if you feel negative emotion, it means you've become something and you're not letting yourself be it. And the moment that you're feeling the negative emotion is the moment that you're doing the not letting yourself be it. That's quite a sentence. In other words, you're doing that thing. There you are. When you feel negative emotion, stop and say, I'm doing that thing I do. I'm doing that thing. I'm doing that only thing that I ever do. Oh, lots of different reasons on lots of different subjects. But it's the same thing. I'm doing that thing I do that keeps me from moving in the direction of who I really am. And that is 100% of the time what negative emotion is. You say, oh, no, Abraham, I'm having negative emotion because something bad has happened. And if that bad thing hadn't happened, I wouldn't be feeling this negative emotion. And we say, we disagree. We think that the reason you're having that negative emotion is because you're thinking about that bad thing. And you say, well, of course, I'm thinking about that bad thing, but I wouldn't be thinking about that bad thing if it hadn't happened. And we say, well, we know that you wouldn't be thinking about that bad thing if it hadn't happened because you're observing, but you've got to be a more selective sifter. You can't just think about it because it happened. There's too much happening out there. And there are things that are happening out there that are wonderful, that would tune you up with source. And there are things that are out there that are happening that are horrible, that pull you away from source. you got to remember, you as a species, you as a mass consciousness, and you as individuals are expanding to more. And if you hadn't already expanded, you wouldn't feel bad about not going. That is the most powerful statement that we could ever, ever make. If you hadn't, if life hadn't caused you to expand to a new place, you wouldn't feel bad in not going. So you could say, whenever you feel negative emotion, this is a really positive way to put it. Oh, I've gone somewhere that the rest of me isn't keeping up with. Or, oh, isn't it life? Isn't it wonderful? Life has caused me to expand. And I think I'll try to explore in the direction of that which I've expanded. You get a sense of it? When you realize that you are source energy here exploring this leading edge time-space reality for the express purpose of finding something new to become, and when you get it that the larger part of you became it instantly and now is calling you toward the becoming of it, and the better you feel, the more you're letting that happen or allowing, allowing yourself to be who you have become, and the worse you feel, the more you are not allowing it. Now, the good news is, Let's say, let's play that both ways. Let's say that life caused you to become something. You know what you don't want, so you know what you do want. Life caused you to become something more, but you didn't go, not right away. Instead, you joined the group who complains about where you are. It's an online chat group. <laughs> Gets bigger every day. Some people really point out well what's going wrong. So as you're beating the drum of where you are, you feel the negative emotion. 
And if you are practicing the art of allowing in the way we're encouraging, you say, oh, this negative emotion means I've expanded, but I'm holding myself apart from my own expansion. Now, what is it that I want and why do I want it?